what I said to the general manager was, he said, well, like you made me look good. And I said, well, it's, it's a credit to the kid, but I said, when you, when he's walking in there, like guys are walking in as a GM. So let's be honest. You're not sitting there going, okay, our, our 12th round is here. I can't wait to see him play. You're probably most likely saying, okay, have a good camp. Like sincerely, you're going to keep an eye on them, but not expecting what Much, they got. Yeah. Um, so when we tell people that no matter what round you're drafted in, you have a chance. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at a 12th round, well, you don't. You don't have a chance. You don't really, yeah. but you did. Unless so, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I've seen it several times, not several times. I've seen late picks get drafted because of the hard work and stuff. And they, they show up to camp ready to go. But the reality is, is that was a very slim chance of ever, of that mm-hmm. happening. And he did it. Yep. And, and, uh, like, I, I can't even explain how proud I am. Like, I, I'm, I'm able to keep my emotions in, but it means so much to me. And what's great about it is, you know, you hear people talk to you all the time as a player. Like, it doesn't matter where you get drafted. Do the work. If you have a good camp, you'll get a chance. And sometimes you say that, and you, deep down you're thinking, but you're probably not going to make it. But mm-hmm. it was just a beautiful... And that's what the GM said. He goes, I'm actually speechless on how good this player is. And the coach came in after the first meetings and said, that's who I want on my team. And they all agreed, like, yeah, he's good. Like, yeah. he can play. And the coach also said that he has no idea how good he's going to be. Yeah. But the coach wants him on that team. So that means if the coach wants you, that's that's a really good step in the right direction because he didn't draft him. He's just a kid that I like that kid. So I don't know if I went all over the place, but wow. It it's, but, but it all it all makes sense. Does it all make sense? Oh, yeah. But it's like just so phenomenal because, you know, you're expecting your fourth round or fifth round to be in the mix, yeah. but not your 12th, maybe in a year or two if they work hard. Yep. I, so, I'm going to do a brain dump on this now too. Okay. And hopefully he doesn't, because I'm going to get a little personal about like the yeah. story. So hopefully, I don't, I don't think he, he would mind, but. It's okay. Just to give like some more context to like where this kid's coming from. So. See, I'm in the same position as you were like, I could not be happy. Like I was, I've been telling everyone I know about this story because yeah. I'm so proud of this kid. Like, and it actually, you've known him longer and been working with him longer than I have, but through the summer, cause we've gotten so tight and he's been so committed to what he wants to do and all that kind of stuff. And the difference between a kid like Seabass and a kid like Charlie is Charlie by default got to be in this environment all the time. Yeah. Right. So Seabass is coming from a different kind of setup where he was he was a kid that was more like me, which is probably why I I feel for him so much because he didn't doesn't have like a hockey setup that he just gets to live in every day. You know, he doesn't get to to show up and skate the whole day whenever he wants. Like he's got to pay for stuff. His parents have to pay for things, right. and he's got to scrape and and get himself in there. He doesn't. He's not related to a guy that plays somewhere. He's not. He doesn't have a hockey name. Like he's got a couple of, or uh, uncles or whatever that do some stuff with hockey, but nothing like super serious. So he was a kid that came from from nothing to do with hockey, basically, and found found his way in, yeah. into the opportunity that he has. So he missed his draft year, didn't get to play, and then he, which is shit sandwich number one, like all the kids. Then he got drafted late, which I know he still got drafted, but for him was probably a little bit disappointing. He he had hoped he was going to go higher. I know that. Then he went to his first junior camp, just a week and a half before. And he's trying to for right. a junior B team. That's right. And absolutely deserved to make this team. Yeah. But in junior B, you can only have two 16-year-olds. So he got cut. And he was like devastated. Like yeah. ab- absolute devastation on the edge of the cliff after this. And then not even a week and a half later, he's on the opposite end of the spectrum. Couldn't be happier and signing in the OHL. Yeah, and you know, I called him on on Sunday. It was the first time I got a chance to talk to him because his life was just like, what the hell is going on? Because it was so unexpected for him. And I was just saying, and this is kind of the lesson that the reason I love this story so much is because of the lesson that so many of these kids can pull out of it. Whether you're an early pick or a late pick or not picked, it's not about. This is exactly what I said to him. Like you see how it's not about what is happening to you today. It's about the process yeah. over time, right? So. I told him like a week and a half ago, you were in deep depression because of how devastating getting cut was from junior B. And thought he was going to go play major midget. Right. Thought he was going to go play major midget. And it was like super disappointing. Yeah. He was really upset about it and was swallowing that shit sandwich. And then 
not literally a week and a half later, two weeks later, he's signing in the OHL and yeah. he's the hottest thing since sliced bread, man. Yeah. At that camp. Yeah. And it's like, I've seen like, you see, like you can't get too low. You can't get too high. When you get dealt shit, you just keep working. When you get the best thing ever, just keep working because the next shit part is going to come, you know? Yeah. And it's a, it's a roller coaster. So as long as over time you're, you're riding up, your trend is upwards. Yeah. That's, that's what can happen. And, and such, it's just the perfect, like it couldn't be a more perfect example of the shit that we preach all the time, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And these kids that, whether they got drafted late, didn't get drafted, got drafted early, it, it's the same pattern, man. Yeah. It's the same pattern. And he was so committed to doing what he needed to do through the summer. Like you said, at the start, they didn't want to go to the cottage. They, you know, at the end of the summer, they went up to Grand whatever, ben. Grand Bend for one day. Yeah. And the three of them, Charlie, Liam, and, and Jerv, were like nervous about missing their Friday hill yeah. workout yeah. to the point where your wife called me. Yeah. To say like, hey, can you tell the guys it's okay that they miss a workout yeah. so that we can go, yeah. we can go to Grand Grand Bend? Yeah. And I was, I was like, that's amazing. Like, better to default to that yeah. than default the other way where it's okay 100%. to miss. You know, so it's just a beautiful, like a beautiful story, a beautiful yeah. example. And I, I, man, I could talk about it for the next three hours. Like how proud I am of this kid. It's, it's unbelievable to watch, and I'm, he deserves every single second of everything he gets because he worked his ass off, man. Yeah. He did not miss one thing.